Good morning, traders and investors around the world, and welcome to Monday's edition of PremarketInfo.com, where we prepare you for the most important hour of the day, the first hour. Well, Dennis, we opened up lower and went lower. Yeah, no... uh no, no rest for the shorts here. They're actually doing very well this morning, down 19 points on the spoos, so it's not looking like a good day for the longs. Okay, uh, overnight high, uh, we, we opened up uh, about five bucks lower, just got a slight pop. Uh, got only one take above Friday's low, so that Globex, uh, low, Globex high stands at 1209. If that holds up as the high of the day, we have a downside target of 1179.50. Uh, the Globex low, uh, 1192, uh, just two ticks below that uh, um, October 20th low that we had uh, pegged here on the sheets for you. If that stands as the low of the day, we have an upside target back near Friday's intraday high at 1221.50. In order to get a little turnaround, get this uh, market back going positive, we need to get back above that critical $1,200 psychological level. And uh, we will therefore make a test of the Globex high. Moving on to the Big Ten. Uh, Apple was just weak all day on Friday. Uh, just couldn't really muster any kind of rally. Settled only a dime off the low, and now we know why. Uh, trading down three and a half bucks. Uh, minor support at the October 7th low of 368.49. I know Dennis is looking at that um, October 5th low at 360-30, uh, but we may even see the 354-24 level, which was the low back on October 4th. Yeah, we've been bearish Apple. One stock we got right here over the last week or two, we've been bearish for quite some time. The stock is obviously coming in again this morning. I don't see much in the array until that 360 area and 354. So I think you're breaking down through this key 375 support. Maybe if we rally up, that gives you a little bit of resistance there. But the stock is definitely in sell-off mode. Yeah, I think we're uh, I think we're just about at the level uh, that we were at when uh, Stephen Jobs passed away on um, October fifth. I can definitely remember that day uh, because that was my birthday. Uh, moving on to um, Exxon Mobil, uh, we did have a double bottom there in the weekly lows at seventy seven ten to eleven. Uh, we're currently trading below that area, so that should be nice resistance on a pop. Uh, of course, you'll find more resistance now at settlement at seventy seven ninety. Uh, gonna make a test here of, uh, the November 2nd low at 76.50. But after that, it opens up for another buck or so down to, uh, the November 1st low of 75.45. Yeah, I like the low 75s here. Obviously, that was resistance back in August and September. We bounced off that 75.45 area, you know, a few weeks ago. So I think, you know, you'll find some support there in that 75 area. Obviously, still resistance is all the way up now. 80s huge. Ain't gonna probably see that for a few days, um, if it, if it can at all. Now, uh, in the high 79s, you see major resistance as well. Okay, uh, IBM uh, just a, a, a mere seven dollars away from uh, Warren's big an announcement about his uh, big position, uh, closing a 185.24. Uh, we've already cut through the uh, the weekly low at 183.39, so I'm looking for a test of this 181.16, which was the low on November 9th. Uh, you got major support at the 179.03 level. Uh, now that we're trading down a couple bucks here, uh, I'm sure you're going to have a hard time uh, getting back over Friday's low, which was 184.66, as well as settlement at 185.24. Yeah, there is an uptrend, you can argue, the last couple of months there, but it looks like we're going to end up testing the lower barriers of that today. I'd, I'd argue if you get it, start cutting through 182, then it probably opens up to the 180, and then you start getting below the 180, and then it starts to get interesting. So I think rallies are to be sold on this one as well. I pretty much have that feeling on a lot of the stocks today. Um, if, you know, obviously we're going to be down here, but for whatever reason, if we were to pop back up, settlement's going to be resistant. And then, you know, you're going to continue to find resistance in the upper 180s. Okay, um, Apple is just quiet, or not Apple, Microsoft has just quietly uh, worked its way down from uh, that 27 level. Uh, now we're poised to test the $25 level as we're trading there right now. 
Um, expect uh, some minor resistance coming back at Friday and weekly low at uh, 25.15, as well as the close at 25.30. Uh, I see some other stopping points here under 25. I see the October 4th low at 24.26. I'm not sure if we're going to test that today. Uh, but uh, if you really want to find some real support in Microsoft, you need to go back to look at some of the lows from August at 23.79 and 24.03. Interesting chart, four straight down days here, Joel. We've sold out that 27 area where there was major, major resistance up there. Uh, you can say the 25, maybe we get a little bit of support there, but I don't see that much at the 25. I know I'm a whole number guy, but I don't see that much at the oh, 25. Boy. Yeah, so I'm going to skip through the 25. I like your 24, 26, obviously. That I think that's the number you said back in the low of October. But I remember this 24 from August. You know, we cut through here. The 24 was giving support. We cut through it a couple of times and traded down in the 2370. So I think if you are playing it for a playoff, the 24, you may have to get to that 2370 area because that's where the real support comes in. But call that 2370 to 24 area all major support. I was uh, moving on to the next uh, next uh, stock, uh, Chevron Corporation. I was just watching that trade a little bit, and I was looking at it after the close on uh, on Friday, and that just kind of fell off a cliff on the close and uh, closed at the low of the day. Uh, so was hoping to be able to try and short it going through that 97.80 level. Well, it looks like someone beat me to the punch right now as we're trading at 96.45. Now, here's a stock that's opening into some major support, Dennis. 95, 96.25 was a low on October 12th. And you had the low on the 13th at uh, 65. So if you're looking for a pop off the open, you absolutely have to get long. Something on the open. Uh, you do open into some support here in Chevron Corporation at the 96.50 level. And, of course, coming back up to that uh, weekly low, 97.81 to 88, uh, should be good resistance the first couple cracks. Yeah, the only concern of mine being a buyer here is that there is fundamental stuff still kicking around. They were still talking about that leak over. I know they had, had <laughs> sold it, but then they were saying, you know, that's why we ended up selling off a little bit Friday because they were him and on that maybe it wasn't totally fixed. Um, so I think, you know, there still is that concern that there could still be a small leak down there. And we know they don't like oil leaks. So, so I think, you know, then assessing the damage, you know, what's been, you know, damaged down there too is another thing to come as well. So a little bit scary from a fundamental perspective, from a technical perspective. I, I like the 95 area a little bit better, but on, on, the, you know, if we were to go into rally mode for whatever reason, I would imagine that 100, which was major resistance back in September and in August, I think that 100 would become resistance once again. Can you say British Petroleum? <laughs> well, we won't say that. I don't think it's going to be that bad. It's pretty minor, and it is Chevron. They'll probably handle it a little bit better than, than maybe BP did. But at the same time, there is always that concern, you know, that, you know, there could be a little more damage than, you know, initial reports. Okay, uh, moving on to J&J. Uh, looks like it's finally prepared to make a move here, trading down 75 cents, uh, cutting through. Well, actually, we're right um, above the eight-day low, which was 63.10, uh, the weekly low at 63.30. So could get a mild bounce here off the 63 level. Uh, going below that, you're looking at the 22 and 23 day lows in this stock in the low 62, 62, 16 to 31. Uh, we might see that later in the week, uh, but, uh, it'd really take a butt whooping to get it there today. Uh, coming back on the upside, anywhere near settlement, uh, 63.85, you'll find some good resistance as well as, uh, you know, Friday's low at the 63.56 level. Yeah, and anywhere, once you get into the 64s for some reason, you know, we were talking 64s just seem to be, you know, giving major resistance to the stock. Obviously, 64.20, which was the high from Friday, I think that number could come into play, too. You know, and you got to just keep in mind, too, uh, obviously, we're going to probably open down pretty significantly here. So anytime these stocks can come back up towards settlement, because sometimes it can get a wild ride even in the first 20 minutes. You know, when you're down 19 points and people may have taken a home long and they can get out flat, all those settlement prices always seem to come back into play as a little bit of resistance as well. So I'd call resistance on this from 63.85 to 64. If for whatever reason we can get back in that area, I think you find some sellers. 
And I so encourage you to have your orders out there because those things just blink up in a second. They hit settlement. You're like, you know, why didn't I sell it in settlement? And then you see that it, you know, it traded 97 shares there. You know, you have to, you have to have your orders out ahead of time. Uh, moving on to Procter Gamble, uh, it's showing some weakness here. Not, not, uh, quite as, uh, weak as our other defensive stock here, J and J. Uh, but it looks poised now to test the uh, Thursday's low, 62.54, um, as well as the 11-day low at 62.37. Uh, below that, things really open up until uh, the 61.63 to 78 level. Uh, here's one you might get a shot to sell the settlement at 63.24. Uh, getting above that, you're running into the double top at 63.50 to 63.65. It's a nice little downtrend if you look over the last month. We just kind of keep drifting down slowly. So you can see this high, those tops keep getting a little we were low on Friday, uh, the low being only 63.06. But 62.5, we bottomed out there November 1st in that area, November 2nd, November 4th, almost November 9th. November 17th, we were a little bit above that area, so I agree that 62.50 area should give you some support. Looks like we're going to actually open up in that area today. Um, if for whatever reason we're to rally up, 64 is huge. It's got some size up there, too, so in the high 63s, you find sellers all over the place. Okay, AT&T has just kind of leaked its way down here to the mid-28s. Uh, 28, 43, and 44, Thursdays and Fridays lows, the old double bottom there. Uh, should be resistance on a pop, so there's a stock you'll get a chance to sell, perhaps at uh, the previous day's lows. Uh, above that, you got the settlement at 28.61, and of course, Friday's high at 28.75, uh, which may not come into play today. Uh, coming back on the downside, I know Dennis is going to tell you 28 is support, uh, but the real support is at the October 4th and or October 5th and 6th lows here at 2790 to 2794. Yeah, a little bit there. I was actually looking and eyeing a little bit farther out. I know it ain't going to come into play today because at and low beta stock. It just doesn't move around that much. But for you swing traders out there, if you're looking for levels to buy this thing off of longer term, you know, maybe over the next few days or week or so, if it could get down that 27 and a half area, back in September we bombed out there three or four times. We kind of just bombed out just above there as our low in October. So there's major, major support down at 27 and a half. Okay, uh, GE, uh, another stock that just walked its way down uh, from $17 just a, a few weeks ago. Uh, we are now trading below the weekly low at $15.50. Uh, so on a pop, you'll get some resistance there, uh, as well as Friday's low, um, $15.62 to $65, another stock that closed on its lows on Friday. Uh, coming back on the downside, you have uh, a low on October 7th at 1524. And then the $15 number, Dennis. Are we going to have to talk about 15 bucks for the next month and a half? Probably. You know, it looks like it's getting back into that range. We are running short on time, so I will reiterate that, though. 15 bucks is huge on this thing. First time down there, I'd be shocked if it doesn't bounce off that area. And I'll distance now. Okay, yeah, just quickly on uh, Coca-Cola, close at 67.39, major support to 6601 to 6610 level. Coming back on the upside, you should find resistance at settlement. Well, that's yeah, our 68. show for today, folks, of the, uh, the Big Ten and the SPOO analysis. We'll be right back with our market movers.